Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Is it normal for someone to feel a very heavy sadness and cry for days during Ramadan someone's first Ramadan for regrets of the past? Is it normal to feel a, a, a great heaviness and to cry for many days at the beginning of Ramadan or any time during Ramadan and, and regret for everything that uh, we may have done in the past. The normal, not normal that the, is, is not… I don't know the word. There is no normal in in the, the emotional states within the soul of somebody but it is a part of the training to have an immense amount of regret. And every time we establish the connection the soul is conveying to ourselves where we came short of our promise to Allah and that is the, the beauty of the heavenly connection is that it is continuously trying to recalibrate the portion of the soul that is within insan. So we have the higher what they call higher conscience and then the consciousness that's within ourselves. So some say soul, consciousness, all these different terminologies the end result is the same. There's a light in which Allah has kept in Divinely Presence and He would not give that light to humans to destroy it or that to let devils to take that light and destroy it. Only a very small drop of that light is sent into the physical body in which we know. And this physical body is powered by that energy and as soon as we make our meditation or salah or tafak or all these practices it's to communicate with that consciousness that one that was sent from the heaven there's a there's a creation inside us that's from the heavens its food and sustenance is heavenly its coordinates are heavenly and our life's duty was to connect to that inner being that inner consciousness and let the inner consciousness and the greater consciousness to talk and communicate. So to let this inner light within our heart flourish, develop and allow that inner light to communicate with the greater light that God has given to us and that He keeps our light in His Divinely Presence. And that's what keeps it to be purified, that's what keeps it to be powered. Imagine that if Allah didn't keep that light, so like a, a technology people have to think of it that it's the, it's the power that's close to the nucleus. Allah keeps that power and energizes it by virtue of that power it's being sent a power onto your physicality. Like an unseen wireless connection that's coming to us. If Allah didn't keep that arrangement and sent everything to you well then devils would do things in life to block your connection and destroy the inner light and the soul of people and they would be disconnected from the Divinely Presence. So that would be a different reality but Allah doesn't want this creation to be disconnected at any moment nor can they exist without that connection. So Allah sends the power. And like a Wi-Fi wireless connection because there's no wire on us. That wireless connection is emanating and powering us. And that's why Allah is everywhere but you can see Allah physically with no shape. But Allah's energy and power is everywhere. That's why Allah describes, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. That power that is powering you, our life is to connect with that reality. And that's why then the science of the tafakkur is that people don't understand it's not that you can just you know close your eyes and connect because we've built up so many barriers and, and badnesses and bad characteristics. We have brought in many different occupants within our body, many 
unwanted inhabitants within the human body of energies and things that we have collected along our lifespan. Those don't allow this communication from below to above. And so when Allah want to guide then He sends them to the guides that come and teach you how to clean all of this garbage, take away all of this and they're like the cable connection company. They facilitate the connection, they can bring the energy from your higher reality, purify your lower reality and make and establish the connection, especially in their presence through the live broadcast or physical nearness. The energy that Allah has given to them, they can grab the two and bring them together. And their energy is sufficient enough to push away every type of negativity and block upon people. That's why it's very difficult for certain people to even log in, tune in or watch. Because their inhabitants are, 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 are worried, they're saying, oh there's like an energy in, in this person, in this broadcast and they make them to be scared. And we have many emails like that, they play two seconds of the show or the live broadcast or the, the program on Saturday and the person gets very scared and turns it off. It's not that the person got scared but the inhabitants that they have brought within their wujud, within their being doesn't want to see this at all, doesn't want the energy that's coming from there and it knows that that energy is coming now to sort of clean and house clean everything. Like a flame, like a fire from Divine the Presence, it comes and begins to burn everything <coughs> of what Allah doesn't want. So anything that Allah doesn't want within that insan, heavenly lights are like a fire onto these bad characteristics. So that's, that's the whole sort of nutshell of tariqah. When we have all these bad characteristics it's like a stormy day, how are you going to make your connection? How are you going to connect to the satellite? So Allah gives this as a mercy to people that be with them, learn from them, uh, associate with them and as soon as you're in their presence watching their broadcast, doing zikr with them, doing the mafid with them. Then the energy that Allah sends, it clears all these blockages. So people say, oh when the broadcast is on and, and we're watching live or we're doing the, the khatim, I feel my connection is very strong. Later when I try to do it I don't feel anything. Well that's a given because that energy is there. That's a time in which all connections can be made. As soon as the broadcast begins, the zikrs begin, the energy comes into the room, the energy comes into the, to the heart of insan and makes the, the connection and facilitates that connection to be strong. And then when you go away, the shaykh is then teaching, then every day try to connect, try to connect, try to connect because you're going to go through all your clouds and storms and every type of obstacle that's within yourself. And it's not easy and that's why Prophet described this is the greatest struggle. You know to struggle against oneself and all these desires and I'm not going to do it and you're going to do it, I'm not going to do it. <coughs> that's the great struggle on how to go through all of this, how to fight all of the bad desires, laziness and, and all the characteristics that come and say not to do and don't do and especially in these days of difficulty. When there's so much motivation to connect and to, to receive the light and to do the practices, the devils are very strong and they insist on the person, don't do it, you don't need to do it, you don't have to need to do it now, do it later and then it becomes so late at night that you're too sleepy to do anything. But that's the whole concept of trying to make the connection. The shaykhs are here not to take your test and to you know give you all the answers to your test but merely to help in your guidance. So that you can answer your own test in life, you can go through your own struggles in life so that you can make your connection with your greater reality and, and that way you can get the inspirations that Allah has set for you and what He wanted from you when He sent you upon this earth inshaAllah. And every time you do make the connection there's an immense amount of sadness. And that's from what we talked about earlier, Allah rabbikum muqalu bala that Allah sent us on a day of promises that you promised to do all these things and we said yes. And when we make the connection there's a reminder, as soon as that connection comes, oh my God I remember, my soul remembers, I promise. 
and I'm falling very short on what that promise is. So there's a tremendous amount of the sadness like a reunion and it's a beautific sadness, it's, it's not a you know sadness of immense grief, it's a sadness of, of beautific closeness to that reality inshaAllah. Where there is a grief that I'm not, I'm not uh, fulfilling but Ya Rabbi grant me himma, strength, grant me the, the zeal in which to do more and then to, to improve myself inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How can we prepare our ittikaf space physically and spiritually? Yeah how to prepare for ittikaf is that everybody to their ability that <coughs> people who are working they have to work and they can come back from Asr till night time and, and ask the family that give me a little bit of space that when I come home I'm going to go into this area and I'm going to try to do my practices and, and just for these 10 days try to, to dedicate my time with Allah Make sure that that area that you're using is, is clean and perfumed and, and you should have already had some place for your meditation and your spiritual practices. and. You begin to do the practices that you can and not to overwhelm yourself. This is not about that you're, you're going to achieve something. This is about with a, a state of love that you want to enter into that state of worshipness. If that's what you want, there's people who don't want to do it, that's not a problem. This is not a mandatory where we get emails now saying, oh, I can't do it so I'm not going to follow you guys or… Everything here is, is all voluntary, these are not… The, the fard in Islam, these are not uh, mandatory by Prophet these are all voluntary worship. When the servant has done their obligations and they approach me through voluntary worship, this is the state of voluntary worship. These are the sunnah prayers, the sunnah actions, these are the actions that people do with love, the zikr, the mafil. they're not a wajib, they're not mandatory. So if the servant wants to do and participate in isolating, the practice of isolating, the, you know at least trying to do a little bit of the isolation if they want then they can get the different wazifas and what to recite and make sure the area is clean. And uh, when they enter into that state from work they come home, they shower, they wash, they put on specific clothes for the itikaf for meditation that they didn't wear outside and walk through the mall with those clothes. So it's something that it's a, like a special state that you put yourself into. A wash, I put this ritual washing and put this clothes and enter into that meditation and isolate. And I isolate myself like my grave, that Ya Rabbi I'm entering into a, a state of like my grave that uh, I want to be in, in my nearness to you and do my recitations and my practices. And we already described the state of itikaf is to cleanse the grave of every badness and bad characteristics. The Ya Rabbi led me to make that grave of mine from difficulty to be filled with light and bad characters to be taken out from me and, and, and from whatever would be coming to me in my time in the grave. Let this to count to those 40 days that everybody has to do, that these 10 days let it to count towards those 40 days to be lessened the difficulty of the 40 days of the grave, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam mm -hmm. Can the shaykh talk about the reality behind tasting zikr and its connection to the malakut? The reality of, of tasting the zikr in relationship to the world of light. Yeah everything has a, has a reality that when the servant is opening up their spiritual state, their spiritual t state has a, a, a state of energy and that they feel the energy, they have a taste and smell for that energy that's being produced. And that's why tariqah is a, is a dhawq, is a state of taste. So they say, okay like what laws did you study, what madhab are you in and where did you study? But when it comes to tariqah old times they would say that, what school are you taking your taste from? So the turuqs come to perfect the person to reach a state of taste, that's why the tafakkur. And that's why it seems like nobody teaches tafakkur anymore, so how could they reach a state of taste? 
So it means that they have to come in to be trained on, on what is the bad characteristics, what is the goal, is the world of light, how to put the bad characteristics down, how to follow the shaykh's teaching but more important is how to sit with yourself and to know yourself. What, what are your characteristics, what are your angers, what are your, your, your bad characteristics and that to make your connection with the shaykh in the spiritual world. And when people ask, you know, who to connect with, you have to follow your heart. There's no force on something like that. Some people don't have any understanding at all for this shaykh or that shaykh and you can't force anybody. Whom Allah has partitioned, He partitioned them already through the world of light. So you connect with your heart, visualize the shaykh in that presence and then you build that spiritual connection with the tariqah, with the shaykhs. And you do all the practices that you have to do and as the energy is increasing, your spiritual connection is increasing, you begin to feel the zikr and you feel the heat, you feel the energy of the heat that's are, that are coming and even in the talks you feel the talks, you, you're inspired within your heart from the talk and even more that being is conveyed. It, these, these talks are coming with encryption, you know how in, in the dunya they send messages with encryption, those are usually for nefarious organizations. The heavenly message is, is encrypted by light even before they understood this level of encryption. That everything that Allah is doing from the heavenly realm, every talk is coming out and going out to millions. Not the 10,000 people but in every assertion could be hundreds of millions of jinn that are listening. And this message that comes out to them is coming out with an encrypted signal that through everyone's heart they have a decoder and a cipher within their heart. And to their degree Allah unlocks their decipher and the message comes in to them the way Allah wants it for them to understand. So it's a very complex system but for Allah everything is easy. But don't think it's coming out like a kindergarten. For Allah everything is amazingly complex but it comes out very simple for Allah because there's no difficulty for Allah So when He orders these guides to speak, when they speak every uh, guidance that comes to them is a guidance through light. So it's not what your ears are hearing only, those you take what you need from what you're hearing with your ears. But more important is the guidance that's coming in through this light and through the soul. Your soul has a key and a decipher and each soul is a different unlocking code. So as soon as the talk comes it deciphers that talk and unlocks and they get information within their heart and soul of what they were in need to understand. The closer the servant reaches towards that reality and their ability to know themselves, their code will be more known to them. Means that it opens very easy for them and what they're deciphering becomes their uloom that is being conveyed into their heart. And that's how the shaykhs are picking up ilm al aduni wa hikmati bi salihin because when they would listen to their shaykhs they were given their deciphering code. So as soon as the shaykh would talk they were deciphering all the realities that Allah is sending within their soul. And once they make their spiritual connection they can connect with the shaykhs of the tariqah from beginning of tariqah to end of tariqah. And those shaykhs come and again convey just light, they appear before them with light flowing and these lights come in and their hearts are deciphering all these codes that Allah is giving to them of knowledges. So alhamdulillah there's so much to reach to in this world of malakut and spiritual realities when the person is trying to open their reality and not stick on just the physical existence. And the, and the, and the immense non-importance of the physical existence. The physical existence is not so flattering, it doesn't seem like much is happening, that can't be it. There must be an immense ocean of realities that people are not understanding and not reaching to. And it's not about physicality, it's not about I'm gonna sit and listen to him and then I'm gonna think about it again and then I'm gonna go into what he's saying, this is not here. 
This has nothing to do with here. All of these realities they're teaching is you have to unlock your soul, unlock your heart, make your connection so that your light is emanating and all these encryptions are active within the heart of that insan and every every where they look they can pick up its realities and its secrets again depending upon their darajah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If anyone sees the punishment of rats eating him and the pain is so real that it's not forgotten even after a long time, is it related to any specific bad characteristic? Please guide. If anyone sees rats eating them and the pain associated with these rats eating them, is that associated with bad characteristics? Yes, that's if you don't have psychological difficulties. So be careful when we teach these things that people with psychological difficulties they can imagine many things because the neurons are, are not working correctly and they can take everything and imagine everything. This is outside of that. This is for people who are in a spiritual progression or Allah putting them through spiritual states and that's from what we talked about of the grave. Every bad characteristic Allah will make it to have an energy and this is from hadith of Prophet that every goodness will manifest as something good and every badness will manifest as its own creature of what it is. Everyone can imagine what a rat is. So the character of the rat this goes around and contaminates everything and just it's, it's just not there for good and it lives at the lowest level. So when society is here and every waste and, and dirt of the society goes down to the sewage, the rat is at the sewage. So Allah is describing them the characters of a very low reality, the energy of that type of creature is a very low energy. So this represents the badness of people and the, the ratting type of character, everywhere it goes it just spreads its contamination and its dirtiness. So the rat is, is familiar and they even use it in movies, you know everything that Prophet taught how it's amazing how they use this in, in movies. They say, oh you're a rat, you're acting like a rat, the person who tells on people that's a, somebody who's backbiting or, or gossiping or, or spreading rumors about people, they say, you're a rat, you're a rat, we don't rat, you know they use this in like gang movies, don't be a rat. This is all the teaching of, uh, of the characteristics. And we said before also Prophet described about dogs, that what was the nature of a dog and the danger of a dog. And there's a society now that has never been actually call themselves dogs. This was never in any history that, that people would say, hey dog, hey you're a dog, hey you're a dog, you're a dog, I'm a dog with dog. And Prophet described that watch out for these dogs, very dangerous. And all of a sudden you come into a life where we're towards the end of this life and there's a group of people that associate themselves with that creature that way. So these were isharats from Prophet these are dangerous characteristics that have overtaken this humanity. And that's why they say 99% of humanity is not really human anymore and they don't act human. They just act like the bad energy that has overtaken them and they take on the animalistic character. So they lost their humanity and they don't act like humans. You can see the actions on, on television when we watch the news, they're not acting like humans. So the humanity is, is evaporating from this earth and there's a bunch of people just with uh, shaitans inside them. Uh, how can I join your tariqah? I've always watching the lecture of Shaykh Nurjan on YouTube and I'm interested to gain knowledge and to purify myself to attain the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. How do I follow the, the tariqah and we're watching these YouTubes, Alhamdulillah is Naqshbandiya tariqah. So they have the online bayat and you recite the bayat and uh, say, I'm uh, with the Naqshbandi shaykhs, my shaykh is Shaykh Nazim Haqqani, Shaykh Abdul Rafaiz al Daghestani, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil, with the barakah of Mawlana Shaykh Isham, Shaykh Adnan and I'm with the Naqshbandi shaykhs. So very easy, you make your, your intention, you 
recite your allegiance and bayah to the tariqah and you continue to follow all that we have taught from this way is that that's just the initiation for your nafs to agree with what you've already been doing. Most important in the tariqah is that to have a, a real bayat is that you live and breathe the way. You're studying it, you're supporting it, you're listening to it, you're learning how to make the connection and that's tariqah. That no doubt your heart is associated and locked with these shaykhs and you're trying to reach to the fires and to the spiritual state where Allah describe everybody to enter the house through the correct door. So we're asking that you know not the, only the physical door of this world to be with them but I want to be in the correct door which is the heavenly door and to make my heavenly connection with them, to be in the world of light with them, to receive their fires, their teachings. And that's why many people as soon as they start the practices of the tafakkur they're having dreams of Shaykh Nazim, Shaykh Dagestani, Mawlana Shaykh, all these shaykhs are coming to them because you've opened now that doorway. And it's up to them how they're going to visit you, teach you and what type of inspiration they're going to give to you and that's what's important is that you make the connection, you do the practices, then that's the real bayad that you're living and breathing the way, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ala Hazrat Walaykum As Salaam wa I have a question, when a person tries to quit any addiction he suffers, he suffers from withdrawal symptoms like cold turkey mood swings, depression, etc. <coughs> Should they handle it? What's the question? Um, when a person tries to quit any addiction, he suffers from withdrawal symptoms like cold turkey, mood swings, depression. How should they handle it? Well, when a person tries to, to, to leave an addiction, they have all sorts of withdrawals and detox and mood swings and, and how, how do we deal with that. One is that to know that the addictions are real and that the, there's a nefarious and, and a wickedness that enters in within the person. So the, the spirituality of detoxing is that these creatures don't want to come out. So for one, the lightest one for people that, that you know it's, it's more prevalent amongst people is smoking. You think it's just a, a, a cigarette with a, you know some toxins but it represents something of a spiritual nature of the shayateen and every time somebody inhales the progeny of shaitans enter into the lung of that human. That's why Satan developed that, evilness developed it. Every puff they take because their nature is of a wind and this dirty contaminated and the say about hundred different carcinogens, poisons are in that. So poison meaning what? These are the zuri of shayateen, these are the children and offspring of uh, nefarious energies. As soon as somebody inhales and takes their puff, whew, hundreds of these are being born now into their lungs because their nation is in billions, could, uh, hundreds of millions could be fitting in a room because they, they don't have a mass like us. So imagine how much negativity is being sent into the lungs of somebody, the progeny of these nefarious creatures that they're inhabiting the lungs of that person, the, the wujud of that person. They begin to occupy so much inside the person, they control how the person talks. So you see these smokers are very fiery in their character. Very angry, it's not him because he's got uh, 10 million shaitan inside of him uh, breathing inside his lungs. And every day he's bringing new ones by every, every puff and inhaling that he's putting into his body, she's putting into their body. So of course no doubt when you want to stop it's not that you tell everybody, get out I'm finished with you. It's like trying to evict a whole, whole bunch of people that are living in your apartment that you didn't uh, want them to be there. And the eviction process is very difficult. You can't just say, I changed my mind, everybody out. You have to call the police, you have to call the sheriff and you have to call people to get them out. So that becomes then the du'as and, and all the practices that as soon as you tell the, the shaykhs that, oh I have this thing and it's okay recite Surat Al-Fatiha on this water, recite it 40 times upon the water and 
keep reciting and drinking every day this water with the du'as, the Imam Sharif al-Nabi and ask for the shaykh's du'a and they start to make du'a for you, drink this water because this light goes in and begin to push these bad characteristics out. And that becomes then the salawats, the awrad and all these practices to keep a, a rope of light that keep pushing in and pushing these occupants out. So they don't come back and they don't in, in, inhabit the body where the person doesn't want to. And that's the source of every bad action and bad characteristic is they come in and inspire the servant from smoking then they say, well why don't you just put some drinking on top of that and then they usually from smoking start to do some drinking and then from drinking they start to do other things and lose their, their ability and, uh, to say yes and no and to understand the difference of yes and no and uh, these are gateways into many, many different difficulties and, and horrific characteristics. Most massacres of people were done by people who drink. So when they were mass massacring even troops of, of prisoners that they were watching, they were supposed to be watching these prisoners and they have stories of them they would get drunk and then go in and then massacre people. So the most horrific crimes are done by people who drink, why? Because they lose their God-given ability just to understand and say, this is wrong. And that's all shaitan wants, he wants to enter into their bloodstream bloodstream, enter into their hearts and overtake their ability to answer correctly, to think correctly and that is the, the struggle for mankind to abstain and to stay away from that and to move towards Rahman and to, to divorce anything from shaitan and to leave the satanic kingdom inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi, is it the same with vaping when they don't use tobacco? Is it what? Is it the same as vaping but no tobacco? Is vaping, yes we have talks on that also, vaping was uh, shaitan's way of, uh, of killing you faster because they found out through the coal, the heat of the cigarette it can only go so deep, the, the warmth of it, it hurts and burns the lungs. So vaping they found actually was significantly worse because with the cold it can go much deeper into the lungs and crystallize onto the lungs. So that's why immediately shaitan tried to kill everybody with vaping right before he introduced this pandemic. Can you imagine if Allah's rahmah had not uh, brought awareness to the vaping, how many young people would have died during this pandemic? Because right prior to this pandemic the world came out and said, oh this vaping is actually dangerous, we got to stop it and many states and, and countries banned it and put all sorts of controls because kids were all just vaping thinking it's just cold and no, not a big deal. But had that come with the mixture of what shaitan wanted to do with the pandemic, they would have all died with the, the flu because they wouldn't have been able to fight the flu, there was crystallization on their lungs from what they were doing. So these are all uh, you know weapons of shaitan so that mankind never reaches their trust. We said that if a person reaches to be rijal and reaches to God's satisfaction Allah will dress him with the power of 1000 men. So it's a chess game, if they get into the board and they become knighted by Allah they are the strength of at least a thousand men. When shaitan knows the game he's not going to let you get to that side of the board and, and to be knighted by Allah And that's the whole shatranj, the whole game of chess is that reality. You're moving on your board to get to the king and queen and the heaven and the kingdom so that Allah will knight you. Once he knights you, you move on this board in any direction you need to, means Allah support you with an immense support and have many abilities that that become now a weapon against shayateen and they're very scared of insan once he reaches towards that reality. So their whole life and their whole existence is to destroy that and never allow them. That's why drink and smoke and all of these activities are meant to destroy insan and destroy their ability to, to be knighted by Allah destroy their lungs, destroy their blood, destroy their liver and their heart. So that they have no value to Allah Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Salaamun al-mursaleen 
Elhamdülillah Rabbil Alemin. Şerefine bi sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem aleyhi ve sahibi kiram ve alem şeyhine fi tariqatı neşbendiyyatın aliyya ve sayrı ve saldatina ve sidiqina al-Fatiha.